What is up guys, it's your boy Farmer Cacus, and today we are going to be showcasing how to kill the final boss of the Warlord's Ruin dungeon as fast and easily as possible so you can absolutely farm that brand new dungeon loot. Because remember, defeating this guy will drop two pieces of dungeon loot compared to one for every other encounter. So, we're going to be discussing the tips, the weaponry, loadouts, seasonal artifact perks, everything you need to know to get that juicy one phase kill. Heck, you can kill him so fast, it'll be well before you've completed a full rotation. There's going to be platforms you don't even touch, and you're going to be on final stand. Now, let's get things started with some tips for the encounter itself. Importantly, in this video, I am going to be assuming you guys know how to do this encounter and all the mechanics. If you don't, check out my guide linked right up above. First of all, make sure to make the most of that rally flag, switch to a chest piece that has full reserves of your heavy, rally with that and then switch off of it, don't forget to do that. Uh, but when the encounter itself starts, the most important thing you need to be doing is extending the damage phases. There are several different mechanics that will result in a longer damage phase. So importantly, on these lower levels, it's just going to be the amount of those taken like turrets that you defuse by simply standing next to them, that's going to influence the time you get to damage the boss. So you want to be able to defuse all four. Importantly, that means do not kill the scorn captains right away because you want to wait for them to spawn their extra turret and then you can kill them and they'll spawn another turret on the location they died. Now you can do a burst of damage when they first spawn and then sit back and wait, but you certainly don't want to be plugging them with damage consistently and that's because if you make them stagger or if you get too close and make them stomp that can override their animation of spawning the turret and delay the time it takes for them to spawn that turret so wait for that turret to spawn the second you see it then you can absolutely clap some captain cheeks but before then don't get too aggressive then you have those four different uh, turrets. If they spawn close enough, you can stand in between like the overlapping uh, circles and capture them both at the same time. You are gonna have those scorn uh, guys running around, the immune guys that you do need to eventually melee to transfer your buff off of. I would recommend kind of waiting until the last few seconds. Like just stand on the turret, throw a healing grenade, throw a rift, like kind of survive. And then when it's about three, four, five seconds left, you transfer the melee, you get the heck out of there. Now importantly there is going to be a little bit of time where those guys are going to despawn and you have just about five more seconds to capture those turrets. So make sure to make the most of that time, look around if there's one almost captured, run to it and try to get it just before the damage phase actually starts. And guys importantly if you get three or four of those turrets diffused, you're gonna get like 15 seconds of a damage phase. So use your well. I see so many teams saving their well of radiance until they get to the very top because that's usually where the longer damage phases occur. But if you're on that very first level, as you can see, uh, it is not worth wasting a full like 15 or more second damage phase. You can do a ton of damage. Heck, we're coming out of the second level often with the boss below low half health. So again, make the most of those wells on those lower levels if you do diffuse enough turrets for it to be warranted. But guys, let's move on from there and get into the weaponry and loadout recommendations. Now, there's actually a few different kind of strategies you could use to go for that one phase. One of those is just rockets, you know, have someone with a Galahorn, the other two people with incredibly good, you know, legendary rocket launcher rolls. I did do that, however, we found it to be extremely ammo inefficient. If you get unlucky with ammo, you're in a little bit of a tough spot. Another potential method is, uh, you know, hunters with lucky pants to massively boost hand cannon damage and then put on the Malfeasance. That thing is incredible, especially with the Lucky Pants. It does bonus damage against Taken, and the boss is Taken, so that is gonna be very ammo efficient. I mean, it's a primary weapon. However, 
If you're running Hunter, you could just use the Celestial Nighthawk, which got a massive buff this season. That thing is cranking out insane amounts of damage, and now it's gonna give you bonus super for getting precision shots. So if you're popping off against the Scions in this encounter, you're gonna get a ton of Celestial Nighthawk activations for millions of damage, literally millions. So honestly, it's hard to recommend against that. But in terms of the actual kind of weaponry, I would would recommend what has been by far the most consistent for us is going to be linear fusion rifles and there's two specifically that stand out now the first one is going to be the cataclysmic this is a solar precision frame it can get some incredible rolls here fourth times the charm is fantastic giving you ammo back for landing four precision shots very ammo efficient then you have bait and switch for a massive boost in damage now some people are choosing to go with surrounded because there's so many scions around you in this encounter uh, but I still like the original bait and switch just remember to switch off of your boss spec for a taken spec for even more damage again the boss is taken but honestly what I liked more than the cataclysmic and what you're gonna see me using is the Briar's Contempt this is a solar aggressive frame linear fusion it can get the incredible role of reconstruction to automatically reload itself up to double capacity and then a huge Huge damage boost from focused fury and importantly guys because it's aggressive frame and solar it is really really good with the seasonal artifact perk flint striker rapid solar weapon precision hits and rapid solar weapon final blows grant radiant so obviously you probably want to have one person Running Well of Radiance, heck, we had two people running it in the background gameplay, which is absolutely not required, but even with two people, you're not gonna have enough wells for every single platform. So Flint Striker, able to give you Radiant and give you that huge uh, weapon boost just by shooting the boss with your solar linears was incredibly awesome. And again, because an aggressive frame linear shoots three rounds for a single ammo, you activate Flint Striker almost immediately okay then hey make sure to also put on kindling trigger for an extra bit of cheeky scorch damage now aside from that another great thing to use alongside linears is a good snipe rifle something like the supremacy right here with rewind rounds and then fourth times the charm again incredibly ammo efficient for a long damage encounter if you run out of linear ammo you can rely on the supremacy to do a ton of damage but really like any good dps sniper is going to be fantastic what you're actually gonna see me use, however, is the brand new Scatter Signal. Just introduced this season. It's a rapid fire strand fusion rifle. It can get overflow and controlled burst. Actually the first rapid fire frame that can get controlled burst. So it does a ton of damage and it's not the most efficient against the boss. Snipers are gonna be a bit better, but it's very efficient at taking down those scorn captains that you're gonna need to kill a lot of in the encounter but guys what's really awesome about this is by incorporating just one person with a strand weapon you can put on unraveling orbs where picking up an orb of power will grant a strand weapons unraveling rounds and then have yourself and your teammates have torch where while radiant which is all the time because of the other artifact perks deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by a strand and stasis debuff so you are going to unravel the boss and then every single member of your fire team will get a boost because that's a strand debuff heck you can even put on horde shuttle so it's going to spawn off uh, threadlings when you damage unraveled targets now it's not really going to work against the boss but it absolutely will work against those scorn captains guys but guys why not use the best of both worlds the dungeon sniper the naim's lance is a strand rapid fire frame it can get as you can see here reconstruction in the first column and then i have demo but it can also get the perk that increases is precision damage with every shot so you're going to be doing a ton of boss damage thanks to it being a sniper and it's strand so it can be applying those unraveling rounds to boost your team damage 
actually pretty viable in this encounter. But aside from that, guys, you also want to be using a fantastic solar primary weapon. Uh, the Vex Mythoclast I've used for quite a few runs. It's very, very good. And in the linear fusion rifle mode, it is going to do a ton of damage. If you run out of ammo, you have three Vex shots that are going to crank. Like I was hitting for like 80,000 damage, I think, a couple of times. And importantly, if you are running a solar primary, you put on rays of precision and you're just going to be clearing waves of enemies those scions are not going to be a problem but actually what shined even more than that was the sunshot the sunshot is an mvp in this encounter because first of all you hit one of those taken scions you kill all of them because of the explosion the sunshot causes but more importantly as you can see when you're shooting the blighted eyes one kill will explode and kill the rest nearby. So, especially when you're on the upper platforms where killing the blighted eyes will delay the boss teleporting away and extend the damage phase, I mean, you can see in the background gameplay, I've never had more time to damage the boss on these platforms than when I was going to town with a sunshot because I ran out of all my other ammo. So like, holy crap, this thing is again an MVP for this entire encounter, guys. But moving on from there, another big weapon recommendation is to incorporate someone using trace rifles. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but that's because if you can have someone playing a warlock and specifically running the cenotaph mask, this thing is incredible. It will let you shoot the scorn captains which mark them and when they die while marked they drop heavy ammo for your teammates and special ammo for you so this is a longer damage phase we've talked about uh, things being ammo efficient and how good that is well regenning heavy ammo because of the cenotaph mask is incredible so you could incorporate something like you know the obvious choice the divinity uh, that's going to also provide like a weaken effect on the boss potentially but another cheeky one is the Navigator. This, thanks to its unique trait Weft Cutter, is going to sever targets it hits, which is going to be that Strand debuff that we talked about earlier, which is going to activate all of those seasonal artifact perks to give your entire team boosts from that. But if you don't want to use that, guys, honestly, a really good choice is just the Appentance. This is a brand new trace rifle just introduced this season and it's strand. So it's in that kinetic slot, which means you can still use your cracked out of its mind sunshot and then a heavy linear fusion rifle for the bulk of your damage. But you're also able to again generate heavy for your teammates. Incredibly, incredibly good. And then moving on, the last thing you need to incorporate is a way to weaken the boss. Now, traditionally, it would just be running a hunter with tether. But this season, you should be taking advantage of the seasonal artifact perk, Revitalizing Blast. Causing damage with a solar ability weakens champions and bosses for a short duration. This is incredible. It means that your Well of Radiance Warlock, that you probably already want to be using, can use something like Celestial Fire to hit the boss and cause them to be weakened. Your Hunter, that's solar because they're running the incredible Celestial Nighthawk, now they can throw a knife and cause weaken. Like, anything solar can throw a grenade, throw a melee, and inflict that weaken effect so you can use all the benefits of being solar and still get those consistent weakens on the boss. Very, very important to do. And so guys, there you have it. I hope you can incorporate some of these things into your loadouts and good luck with the farms. I hope you enjoyed this video and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.